Welcome to the Beat 139. I'm Doc. I'm Don Vito. How y'all doing? What's good? What's good? Springtime is in the air. You know, we got um we got our first guest. We got our first guest tonight, Bronx Born CEO of DDL Enterprises, actor, comedian, gangster comedy Capone. What's up, Capone? What's going hey, on, man? man? I see you laughing and no, all that. Y'all done did some research. Yeah, bro. man, you do real research. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you okay. know, fly by night there, yeah, man. That's what's up. I you like know, that. Yeah, be sweet of B139, man. You know, that's like cool, I said, man. we try to, like, show love to everybody that's, you know, famous people and people that's trying to come up, you know what I'm saying, with the story, you know? I got you. So tell everybody where you're from, Capone. Let them know, you know, a little bit about yourself. I'm from New York. I would say that because I uh, grew up in the Bronx, lived in Manhattan, moved to Queens, and stayed in Brooklyn sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I'm New York for real. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it was yeah. what it was. <laughs> so how'd you get the name Gangster Comedy? Mm -hmm. Streets, brother. Everybody know that. I was a hustler. A uh, ruthless young hustler. And, uh, <laughs> uh, the name Capone stuck to me and I went to the music business and uh, it came from the streets to the music business, back yeah. to the streets and comedy from prison. So Right, right, right. I was going to touch on it. Yeah. You did like a little nine month bit or something. No, I did it a uh, year and a half. A year and a half. Yeah, okay, okay. Everybody get that number mixed up. I heard 10 years. <laughs> a couple of years. All right, so you say jail was a blessing for you. Oh, definitely. Um, In what way? Because as young, ruthless, I would wind up uh, definitely dead or in jail for a long time. So mm -hmm. it taught me that that's not the place that I want to be. And, uh, you know, when you're in jail, you get talk from people in jail, but the people on the outside talk to you as well. And mm -hmm. when you hear people talking to you and saying that this is not this is not you, you right. kind of eat it all up and you know, you take those next, those next moves to be doing something different. Right. Yeah, so when you went there, you wasn't a comedian when you first went there. Uh, so I, actually, I was getting ready to start a comedy career because I was always a good smart mouth uh, snapper, yeah. joker, whatever they call it now. And uh, somebody told me that if you think you're funny, you know, why don't you bring it to the stage? So. Mm -hmm from the transition of being in the streets to go into uh, comedy, I got locked up before it actually took place. Mm. Yeah. Oh, so you used to be heat roasting people in the streets. Oh, yeah. I was, <laughs> I was ruthless with that. Like, uh, that's where it all came from. Like, yeah, snap. Yeah, snap. 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 Oh, yeah. I would crucify people. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Yo, I ain't gonna lie. Snapping back in the days was worse because everybody laughing. Yeah. People be ready to fight. Like, yeah. And that was snap. It was fun, man. It was fun. Dude. It was a fun thing. It, snapping, it, man. It, was a, it was a method to it. Right. See, a lot of people don't understand when, when you snapping mm -hmm. on somebody and... and uh, you getting them, or even if they getting the best of you, you kill them by agreeing with them. Like if yeah. you got on some whack stuff yeah. and somebody be like, man, them whack every he's like, yeah, I know, these are whack. <laughs> yeah. These are whack, but those. Yeah, yeah you know, so <laughs> when you throw it back on them, they can't handle that. And I had to learn that and I used to kill people for real with that uh, snapping jump. So, so when you were inside, you started writing that down? Nah, I actually, I actually learned that, uh, because everybody don't know that I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm a businessman. Mm -hmm. And uh, I learned from the streets what the business is all about. But I also knew that if I was successful, and what I mean by success, I always say this, I got out and I didn't, you know, I ain't in jail for the rest of my life. I ain't, I ain't get killed. So I got out and uh, I decided that whatever I wanted to take on, whatever type of business I want to take on, I can do because with being in the streets, dude, you got everything against you. Right. Police, snitches, stick up kids, bad product, all of that. And so mm -hmm. with that, you can make an empire, you can make an empire with anything. Also, when you started, right, you had in your mind already, I'm, I'm, I'm building an empire. Yeah, exactly. You ain't come with the mindset like, I just want to be a, I'm nah. a big comedian. Nah. So when you in there sitting in that cell, you're like, man, I'm trying to build something. Yeah, exactly. You're trying to figure out what you want to do when you come yeah, home. Yeah, exactly. So let me ask you a question. So let's take it back again, right? Mm -hmm. So before you got into being a comedian and all that stuff, so we you know we do our research and stuff. Right. Said so you you came home and you worked with the mentally ill and all this. Yeah, stuff. I um. That's that's good. why I never you never hear me crack jokes about people with a handicap. Mm -hmm. Never did because I, I witnessed it. You know I, I witnessed people normal and I, I use that word very strongly yeah. because people take it for granted. Regular people like us with all our limbs and everything that we have mm -hmm. and something happened to somebody to trigger them to yeah. a drink can make a person 
turn handicapped. You know, somebody spite your drink or whatever the situation, it could be anything. So I've seen that with my own hands and I've taken care of people who were just regular dudes like me and you on the street. Next mm -hmm. thing you know, bam, something happened to them yeah. and they, they need care. But yeah. you know, it's funny that you said that about spiking a drink. Mm -hmm. People got like, some people are like, damn, how you taking this shit so hard? Like when they saying how Cardi B was um, spiking uh, guys yeah. robbing them. I took offense to that because uh -huh. I, I, I have people I know personally, they, they ain't right to this day. Yeah. They got things, because you, you're not no doctor. You don't know what you put in there. Exactly. Doctor. So you're thinking that it's going to fuck them up for a little while, and then they're going to come back, they're going to be all right. Right. But th I know people, it was gone from that. I see. So I was real tight behind the, behind that. I seen a chick where I was in the club, and just like I'm sitting next to you speaking now, and like I'm within a second, somebody hit her with the joint, and she running through the club, butt naked, just taking off her clothes. Ah, ah, nobody knew what it was, but... The dude figure he could spite a drink, get a slide over. Yeah, exactly. He ain't know how to react. Yeah, he don't know. You don't yeah. know that. Yeah, I mean, I'm totally against messing, putting some somebody drink, messing with somebody food. You get hurt for stuff yeah, like that. Man. That's foul, man. I don't, I don't, I ain't you know? never drink. I don't drink. I don't even buy women drinks. Anybody who knows me, yeah. a chick could say, well, goodbye. Nah, I'll, I'll give you she some money. She probably think you tight, right? Yeah. yeah awesome. <laughs> Cheap. <laughs> but nah, it's never been my thing. Wow, that's crazy. So when you so when you're released, you went right, you got busy right away? Um, well, like he said, I was taking yeah. care of the, the handicap. Mm -hmm. And then um, I caught the bug with uh, the same guy who was producing big shows. His name was Rob Bradley from New York. And uh, he was producing big shows. And so, you know, I, I put my hand into it, but my mental was still prison. Mm -hmm. Even though I wasn't locked up a long time ago, you I mean, long time, you learn and you, you, you fall into those ways. So my first introduction to comedy, you know, I did a good job because I studied it. Mm -hmm. And then when I came home, you know, you try to talk to regular comedians who are pretty much up there. And uh, one of the comedians, you know, tried to make fun of me. He was like, mm -hmm. ah, this nigga coming, he did one show and now he trying to, to do Def Jam and all that. Because I asked him, I said, yo, how... Yeah. How you do, you know, how you get on Def Jam? And he was like, this nigga here, you know, trying to make fun of me. Yeah. I wasn't used to that. Yeah. So I pulled him to the side and that prison thing came out of me. I said, dog, I, I'm hurting you. <laughs> yeah, and I was dead serious. I, I wasn't used to that no yeah, more. Yeah, 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 yeah. So right, when right, he, right. he came up, I was like, don't you ever play me like that. And I, I guess that's where that name really stuck. Like, this nigga, yeah, this nigga crazy. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you be direct. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like most of me are laughing and joking. It's like, you, you, your face and you be like really getting at him. Well, um, I, I've changed a lot. You know, I've learned a lot. And throughout the course, the one guy who was with Tracy Morgan when he passed away in the, the car accident was Jimmy Mack. When I came home, I was rugged. I was rough, I, you know, you lose your woman, you hear all the rumors and all that type mm -hmm. of stuff. So I used to really come at women, these days, and all that, because that's all I knew. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jimmy Mack pulled me to the side. He said, yo, you got a nice build, you got a nice, women love you when they see you. He was mm -hmm. like, just tone it down a little bit. And when I did, that's when I started creating the patterns of learning what women like, you know, mm -hmm. when I talk about it on stage or, you know, trying to give fellas some type of advice, because we're in a losing situation. It's every day it's some other dude is with your chick or doing something with your chick because we're not paying attention and it doesn't seem to stop. Yeah. You see, what I like about you, I, I see you put a lot of comedians on. Right. Like, I see, I'm like, wow, this guy really, like, a lot of people's, like, under your umbrella. Yeah. We had on the show uh, Cookie and um, Kenny Wu. Kenny Wu. Oh, yeah. And they, they spoke highly of you. Like, oh, yo, you know, this guy. Cookie spoke highly of you? Nah, she did. Yeah. She did. That she said, "Yeah, you know, she had, you had differences, but she said she, you, you, you did right by you. Yeah. You put it out there. Right. Like you can have your difference with somebody, but somebody who take a chance on you. See, it, this, this is my thing, and and don't want to put Cookie on the spot. Right. But when you get put on, or you reach a certain plateau that nobody will look out for you, mm -hmm. you're gonna get the people in your ear. Oh, what was he paying you? What is he doing this? Whatever negative. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, it's really sad." that you can have something so great and be so weak at the same time because now that you ain't on really no more, yeah, yeah. you know, what about those same people that was talking to you, putting a bug in your ear, when I'm taking you places that nobody don't have to know what you're doing or what yeah. you're getting and all that, but 
people I've seen it happen a whole lot of times. Everybody worries about the money. You can't count the money. Yeah, exactly. You can't count the money. Yeah, and it's a problem. Yeah, exactly. Let me ask you a question. What was your first performance at? Where did, where did it start at? Uh, my first performance was, uh, there was a college, uh, not, uh, what was that college on? Um, it's on St. Nicholas. City um, College? I think that's it, City College. No, no, City College on Amsterdam. St. Nick, you say? That's St. Nick, that's City not College. City College. No, no, City College is up the block. Right. The one going, like if you're going downtown, there's a college. On well, St. Nick? Yeah. Saint, it, they used to do shows you, there all the time. You sure on St. Nick? It's not City College. It's a little further down. It was. It's, it's connected to the hospital. What's the hospital? St. Luke's? Oh, Columbia. Columbia. Columbia, Columbia right. Oh, okay. right, 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 right. I ain't saying that. Yeah, yeah. Right, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's what happened yeah. before the Bronx. Yeah. <laughs> Columbia yeah. University. Yeah. Ain't that on St. Nick? What's that street? Yeah, it's Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Amsterdam, okay. Well, Amsterdam turns all kinds yeah, yeah, of ways. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, straight. Yes, yeah, that was my first show, man. And um, I really rocked. And the funny part is that when I did the show, it was sold out. Mm -hmm. But majority of the people came to see me fail. Because mm. I was that dude in the streets yeah. that snapped on everybody. So right. ah, yeah. We're gonna boo this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man, yeah. but it was it was it was that's why I caught the bug. Uh. And I knew that I had something because I never did it before. Yeah. Right? And I was different. You know I meant to ask too, um did Commodore ever work with you? Commodore was one of my students. Yeah, because he was on his too. Yeah. yeah, he's one of my Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, I I, I love people who, who give back. Yeah. Your give back game is crazy. Just yeah. like the Omar, you had you put a lot yeah. of people yeah. on that stage. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Travel with you, right. your travel team. Yeah. Cause I remember Kevin Hart. I put Kevin Hart on. Mm. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um the I thing is coming where I came from. Trying to get the opportunities, all them guys shut me down. Mm -hmm. And I don't like cursing too much on the radio, but they shut me down. And so, with being shut down, you know, any strong soldier, you're gonna make your own way. Mm -hmm. So, I tried to make a way for guys who were trying to get in there that was in my shoes at once that they didn't have to go through the struggle. Mm -hmm. Just teach them what it's what it's really about. But every one of them kind of falls. Now, there's some success stories, but. Every one of them came back and told me the same thing. Yeah, man, these guys told me you jipping us and you doing this and we wearing your shirts. I'm like, wow, you know, I, I got a corporation, brother. And if you feel that it's a problem with wearing my shirt, then whatever. You know, McDonald's, if you work for McDonald's, everybody got to have on a uniform. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the yeah. way I look at it. That's right. how I run my corporation. Right. I'm putting you on exactly. and building my company. And if I can get you paid and do whatever it is that you got to do. But if people I ain't mean, had no problem with, with uh, Russell Simmons. Or Nick Cannon. Cannon. Nick Cannon, yeah. everybody yeah. went. Yeah. 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 You understand? So, yeah. yeah, they don't understand it. And right. it's just that my entity wasn't a, a, a television entity. So everybody felt like, you know, I was taking advantage. So I just got tired of helping people. And I said, I've been, you know, I'm going to help myself. And once I did that, that's where I really blew. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you take the time and... You try to give people advice. I, I know the Hollywood thing. I've been there. I've been in movies at a young age. And so you try to tell them, yo, when you get on stage, you ain't supposed to do a certain amount of minutes. I don't care how funny you are. You only get a certain amount of minutes on TV. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of cats don't get it. Mm -hmm. And that was my purpose, just to prepare them for the next thing. I had a whole group from Team Capone get on BET, where they, they didn't even right. have to audition. Right. It's like, yo put my people on, and they respected me enough to do it because I knew who the producers were. But these cats wouldn't have got that shot not that quick. Right. But, you know, I, I don't, I wish them all well. I still talk to a few of them, but a couple of them, it hurt because when you put your soul into somebody and you mm -hmm. believe them, you like, like, and I'm going to be honest with you, Cookie was my prized possession because I trained her to become just hilarious. Mm. But she couldn't see it. Right, and now look what Just Hilarious is. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Just yeah, you right. Yeah, yeah. Just Hilarious. Sometimes when people figure out, they have to take that dollar sign out. Yeah, look at the other, the big picture. Same thing like us with this company. You know what I'm saying? You cannot think. Of this look at the big picture. Just, yeah. just let it grow. Just let exactly. it see what happens. It's all about success. It ain't about the money. It's about success. Because once you become successful, then that's gonna come. Gonna we already come. know that we need some money somewhere right. down the line. But once you build it up to a certain 
to a certain level, you know what's going to come with it. You, you know, know what I'm saying? Well, the thing is that you have to know the love. And that's my thing. I love helping people. There you go. But I don't, like, I, don't, I don't like being taken advantage of. Wow. I know where my blessings come from. Mm -hmm. I know where my cash flow comes from. I, I work. I don't sleep, dude. Right. There's always something. I don't, you might not even know I'm part of it, but I am. Right. And there's a t-shirt company I have. I have boutiques. Right. I have all of that working. But the thing is that when you put yourself into position to help people, a lot of people don't understand what work it takes to be able to try to, you know, to, to guide somebody. Because yeah. not everybody wants to be guided. And me and this dude, we live that, we live that life every day, seven days a week. Yo, we, we, you could have said, said it no better, man. Said no better. <laughs> Both just smile like, yeah, you sound yeah, like you're talking about it. Like I mean, you're giving yeah. brothers opportunities and they don't see it, man. The voice, a voice needs to be heard. And I, I truly appreciate, that's why when you call me, whichever one of y'all call me, yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, I jump on it. I'm not, I don't care how big I get or whatever. There's yeah. always somebody. And everybody used to ask me, because I used to never do comedy clubs. Right. Yeah. My whole thing was theaters. If I couldn't get put in the theater, I would rent it out. But then somebody spoke to me and was like, just, just out of nowhere. It was like, yeah, I want, I want to see you live so bad, but I can't afford those $50 tickets. So, wow. So come on where you come from. I just want to say something real yeah, quick. Yeah. Come on where you come from. Where do you get that mindset to feel like that, though? Um, humble. Prison humbled right. me. Um, I've been rich and mm -hmm. I've been poor. Right. When your mother died at a young age, you realize that there's nothing more precious than time. See, that's why I, I, I asked you that question because a lot of people don't know that you got to crawl before you yes. walk. You know what I'm yes. saying? And they just want to... Go, they just want to jump right over here. <laughs> it don't work like that, man. You know what I'm saying? But you have to realize the, the, the vehicles that's here now. There you go. Everything on the internet. And I, I want to say this, and I hope there's some young people listening. Mm -hmm. Where we grew up, you have to understand we had people giving us knowledge. There's no such thing as knowledge no more. There's information. Mm -hmm. All of these young people are getting information. They turn on their phone. They see what happened. That's it. There's no studying what happened. There's no reason what happened. It's just, okay, we got that. So they got the information, and it spreads around. Right. We have people constantly, constantly talking to us. Knowledge and wisdom. Exactly. Yeah. And that's a total difference. So when you understand that, you can understand what the difference is. Yeah. So um, I want you to get back. I think it's important what you was about to get into when you were saying about a lady came and you said, oh. I can't afford the 50. I think right. that's important for the listeners. Well, yeah. A woman came to me and was like, I would love to see you. I saw you on TV. I seen you in movies. And I just can't afford those theater tickets. And so that's what made me start doing comedy clubs. Because I felt like comedy clubs was ripping us comedians off. They don't pay a lot. But you get three to four hundred people a night, and you work from Thursday all the way to Sunday, and those people sometimes get free tickets. So it's a decent price. It's not what I'm used to, but who can put a, a price on three hundred people that you made smile? One lady came to me and was like, um, "You helped me through cancer." Mm -hmm. See the stories behind all of this type of stuff. People don't know, and that's the thing that keeps you keep you going when. Uh, Sometimes you just want to just lay back sometime, and you can't, because comedy is definitely a medicine. It just hasn't been diagnosed yet. Yeah, and I agree, because like, like I'm saying, like when I reached out to you, right, always like when we first started the show, it was like, go oh, oh, Harlem, the people who's, who's not on, and people who's on. We like to do the mixture, right? right? But also a lot of people been requesting, they feel like you're not to get a phone. Oh, real good. I'm like, I know, I want to get, get them. I reached out to you a while ago, but right. I time to get them. But you be amazed, because some people think like, oh, man, they just telling me that. Like, when we be telling certain guys, like, you know, your status and things like right. that. Like, yo, people is really, you be surprised. People, people see us every day, be like, yo, y'all need this person, get that person. And a few people said, yo, y'all to get Capone. Especially when they saw, like, the Cookie interview. Right. And now, like, we definitely have to follow up to it, because... You birth, like kind of birthed them, right? So it's now like, wow, you got him now. Yeah. So it, it worked out good. Yeah, I um, I'm proud of them. You know, I haven't seen Cookie in a while. She approached me one time, and I kind of like, I felt bad, but I like, I don't, I don't want to hear it, and I didn't want to hear it because I was, I was. It could have been immature, but I was hurt. Yeah. You know, you you hear from somebody like, I mean, you were my friend. They ain't never been nothing. We never it was no never no sex, none of that. But to 
to just say, you know, people telling me that you mad at me because I'm starting my own thing. I've trained you to start mm -hmm. your yeah. own thing. That's what I want you to do. Right. Why would I be mad at you? What I don't like is how you directing yourself from what I taught you. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a way, uh, Just Hilarious is a hood chick. Yeah, hood chick. Cookie is a hood chick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just Hilarious is Cookie all the way around. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is I try to train Cookie so she wouldn't fall. You see what Just Hilarious is falling now? Yeah, yeah. Because of her... Her, she's giving opinions of things that she's not taught about. Exactly. And that's what I try to tell Cookie. Like, you can't, you can be street, but there's certain things that you just can't do and can't carry yourself as a woman, as a mother. You can be as ratchet as you want to on this mic, but don't let your personal life exactly. become ratchet for exactly. everybody to see that. Because everybody came to me and I'm like, oh, you wasting your time. Yeah. And it hurt because I wanted her to win so bad. And I don't think she really knew how much I was putting into her. And Wu, you know, that's that's my dude. I would like to take Wu out a little bit more because Wu is Harlem forever. Yeah, he are. And, um, but, you know, the world needs to see these guys. <coughs> yeah, and, and that, that's a big thing, man. Anytime, so I, lo I love when people help and I love support. Me and V, we always took support every time on the show because it, it, it works when everybody support each other. Right. But then, when the bigger you get, the less support you get, then you get support from people you don't know. Yeah, and that's how things turn around. Well, I think we all are waking up because there's a lot of us like the Nipsey Hussles. And, yeah. you know, we try to be there. Unfortunately, it took his death for a lot of people to wake up. But, you know, it's, it doesn't mean that we stop. Mm -hmm. You know, you just have to keep going. You Like you said, if it's about the bread, then you shouldn't be doing this. The bread will come. But just be prepared to do what you got to do when the bread does come. Exactly. A lot of people wish for that bread and it hits them and they're done. Yeah, yeah, always tell people... Mercy. I always tell people, this is like a job. If you're going to leave a situation, make sure you don't want to do that. Yes. Better. Or just exactly. stay in that position and rot. And, but you, you can't leave and then not, not do better. So you got to have a plan if you want to leave a job. People leave a job, yeah. then, then you like you can probably stay. And the number thing, ne <laughs> never bite the hand and feed you, man. Uh, you know, and, that, and a lot of them, <laughs> scenarios you just painted, right. it sound like people biting the hand and feed you, you know? That's the way what's your, what's your, um, your, your friendship with, with talent, man? Talon is, he's been around for a little while. And I, th I think I've seen y'all do a couple of we are actually shows together. On stuff tour. Together. Talon is my dude. Right. Love him to death. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't say nothing bad about Talon. And if I did, I would tell him. Mm -hmm. But um, Talon was one of the guys who uh, who was who shitted on me, if you want to put it frankly. Okay. And uh, Rob was one of the guys who... Shit, no, stay with we, yeah, we got a movie coming out together that we actually talk about this. Right. So when I was coming up, I was fresh from prison. Talent was the man. Yeah. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. And uh, I asked Talent, I said, yo, um, I'm a new guy, you know. Um, how do I get, you know, put on where you can take me on the road with you? And he put his hand on my shoulder, you know, gave me that, uh, yeah. nah, I really don't work with <laughs> too many young guys at one time. And so, even though I respected his decision, mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a loose cannon. When you put me into a situation where I got to prove myself, I'm going all out. Mm -hmm. Rob Stapleton was the guy who owned the Bronx with comedy. Mm -hmm. He had all the celebrities come in. He gave me an opportunity when I was younger, like in the comedy business. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but that was it. So when I took over BBQ's, which was in the Bronx. I brought a yeah, I brought a whole different entity to the comedy game. Mm -hmm. Hustlers, I mean, niggas with money that's coming in, coming to the Bronx from Jersey with minks on and fly cars. So this became just a whole scene because everybody knew me from the streets. So part of it was like, this nigga doing comedy? And then the other part was like, well, he's funny. So it became that. So even though it was Rob had his great uh, entity. I had mine. People from the outside made it seem like we were against each other. Yeah, yeah Capone this. Like you either had to be with Capone or you had to be with Rob. Mm -hmm. And then when me and Rob spoke, it wasn't nothing like that. You know, we were just two businessmen trying to make it, you know, make a better way for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And was, you know, was saying that we've been touring on for three, four years now. It's the New York yeah. Kings. And yeah, the Young Kings, yeah. It's me, Rob Stapleton, Mark Vieira, and Talent. And when I say it's 
It's incredible. It's incredible, man. Yeah. So how's that going? Oh, it's off the hook. You know, we're getting ready to shoot a Netflix. We just shot a, a special for uh, for the uh, internet just to get our names out there more. Mm -hmm. But it, it's been really, really crazy. Let me ask you something. <laughs> to you, in your opinion, mm -hmm. I, I have my up thoughts. Who more funny than you? Kevin Hart or... Um, <laughs> Or uh, my man, Cat Williams, because we, we debate about this all the time. Mm. Well, I'd personally say they're two different styles of comedy. Yeah. And Cat Williams is fast paced. He's very fast paced. And uh, Kevin has stories that he tells. Mm -hmm. um, I can't say who's funnier. The reason I can't say it is because. If I say Cat is funny and you look at Kevin numbers, Kev has done things that Cat Williams can never do. Right. Or he hasn't done. But I don't think I you always go by numbers. I like Cat better. Yeah, Cat, I mean, Cat he's funny. Flawed. Yes, he's he's funny, but, you know, everybody has their time. Yeah. Like, everybody asks me, who do I think I'm funny in the Cat Williams? Hell yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm not on his form. I can, I can honestly say that I don't think... You can't tell me one cat that's funnier than me. And, and yeah. a lot of opportunities, and I'll say this on the air, <laughs> a lot of opportunities have been taken away from me because these so-called uh, headliners don't want to follow me. Yeah. You getting that big money, mm -hmm. let me go up there and do what I do. Let's go ahead. Then come on. Let's yeah. Go ahead. yeah, they'll tell you in a minute. Nah, yeah. we can't have yeah, them on the show. Yeah, they the show. Yeah, yeah. Jump on with Doc talking about, this is where I see them too, right? I think Cat Williams is more funny live, but I think Kevin Hart is more funny in films. That's what I, that's well, Cat Williams is more funny, funny live. Than me. Yeah, but Cat, Cat, I say Cat is more funny he's live, but, funny but live. not on film. But, Kevin Hart wins on film, but there's no. Cat but that's his opinion. That's opinion. Cat yeah. don't have the arsenal that Kevin Hart. Yeah, he does. Right. Yeah, so it's. Yeah. I made two movies, but my movies was funnier than. You know, <laughs> I mean, me and Kevin, we did uh, Paper Soldiers together. Yeah, paper soldiers. But, but it's, it, it comes with a lot of different entities. Of, like, people talk about Mike, Mike Epps. People talk about Tracy Morgan. Yeah. You can say what you want to say about them, and you're entitled to your opinion, but numbers don't lie. Yeah. When they when they at arena and these lemons sell out, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. Like, <laughs> I'm a dis I just think sometimes some people like dislike yeah. certain people. I don't oh, think yeah. all the time necessary that that means a person is is, is funny. I can agree I with think you. it's sometimes just because like to me, I ain't crazy about my guys. Yeah. I, and, and Tracy Morgan. A lot Morgan, of people say that. Tra Tracy Morgan, I, I, I like him as a person, but and I've right. met him before. He he cool as shit. Right. But like on like I never I agree with you though. Numbers don't lie though. Yeah, nah, it. but numbers is it's good, but I don't think that's the end all be all. Let, let's put it like, this way. You're saying, you're saying, to me, I, I'm not saying this because you're here. Right. Like I, like I said, I've met some guys and they're cool. Right. But you're funny to me than both of them. Yeah. They got better numbers. I, I would agree to that. They got better numbers, but so that's why I don't always go by numbers. They have an, energy, an engine. Yeah. An engine. I'll give you an example. Young, the young boy, uh, DC Youngfly. That's my little dude. He talks to me all the time. Cap. You know, what I got to do, OG, what I got to do. And, and all, you know, I give him advice because that's my dude. Yeah. But ask him what he put himself behind me. No, but he's getting booked way more than me yeah. because of the, you have an engine behind you. The popularity comes and you got to realize times have changed. And I, and I respect that. I'm not going to too much change of who I am because of what I built. But at the same time, you have to understand, like when I was coming in, all of the older cats used to say, uh, y'all niggas wouldn't really be where y'all at if it wasn't for Def Jam, mm -hmm. right? So they hated on us yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Def Jam is what got y'all niggas up there where y'all need to be. Mm -hmm. Now we're the old niggas saying, y'all niggas wouldn't be nothing if it wasn't for the internet. It's yeah, the right, same right, right, right. social media. Yeah. yeah, so when I was coming in, everybody wanted to be on TV or in the movies. Yeah. Nobody's going to the movies now. Like, Nobody's watching TV and, and, now. And, and like to me, to be honest, I don't see where the fuck Tiffany Haddish is funny. To me, I don't see it. <laughs> I just don't see it. Well, I don't I, like you said the numbers. Like, of course, I would rather. Well, be Tiffany famous. don't do really. She don't do comedy. So when Cap was saying that, I was allowing him the whole 
Like, what is, what is she funny? But she's more, she's, she's like, like she's, actress, she's actress funny. Right. But she's not, me, she's but not a comedian. Even that movie, she, like, like, it's just... Now, she's not a stand-up comedian. She's actress funny. She was, but it, she didn't but get it. She didn't get it. She right. got booed a lot, too. Yeah, because she, she got she's not funny at all to me. Like, that's why I said to me, I, I ain't easy to laugh, I guess, but... Do you, do you think there's a lot, a lot of, um, hate... Against comedians, oh yes, yeah. they said it's bad. Yes, yeah, a lot of comedians said that's bad. bad. Well, they said it's worse than the rap game. Nah, man. nah, it's, it's about equal. Yeah. What well, you got to realize this: you don't have no standards. You don't have. There's a lot of cats that are selling soul for whatever. If you're not funny, who's going to tell you you're not funny? If people are paying you to do these shows, yeah. So. The difference is, is I have standards. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'd rather go for free than you to offer me a number and me just to take it. That's not me. But there are people who will say, well, I can't afford Capone, so I'll take this dude and give him a thousand dollars or five hundred dollars and you'll fly all the way to Florida for that five hundred dollars. And that's how cats are getting put on. They're not really doing that. And I heard an interview today about Rip Michaels saying he's the king of New York because he had 13 rooms at one time. Oh, you're not the king, bro. Mm -hmm. you're, not, <laughs> you're not the king. And, and I just say that, you know, you, you're entitled to, to, to your own opinion, but the four guys that, the three guys that I roll with, hands down, are the true kings of New York because they paved the way for a lot of these cats. He said, he said, and Mark Vieira. Mark Vieira, who is the Latin part of the crew, mm -hmm. talent, who is the veteran, and Rob Stapleton, who is, he's been around all of us. And, and he know. held it down. He's still holding it down every Tuesday at Salsa Con Fuego. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> he's relevant. Those are guys stayed relevant when other guys didn't. We never saw it, we were the funniest. Yeah. Never. Exactly. So I want to touch on that. Um, now you're doing your own thing, you try to help people. You, you're not gonna, you don't think you wanna get back into that lane like pulling people back in? Um, I still do. But the thing is, I'm, I, you know, I have a comedian that's under me. His name is Alfred Kanga from Dallas. I have, I started, um, uh, what's the, the guy that's on the internet heavy now with the big eyes? They oh, might, yeah. Um, the black. Um, no. Um, man. Shula King. I'm sorry, Shula. That's my dude. Like, I started these guys off, and they still under my umbrella. The one thing I love about them, Shula is, is huge now. Mm -hmm. But I say, Shula, I need you on the show. Yeah. And I, I couldn't really get it, except for Commodore. Commodore and Wu are still, like, my dudes. How you feel about Commodore? Because he's, he, he's a different type of comedian. Yeah, but let me, ask, let me ask you a question, man. He's not live, like, on the show. But he does, he's big on 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 the, the uh, on internet, Instagram, on, on, on social media. Right. Right. And when he was on our show, the phone wouldn't stop ringing. Right. The whole show was like boom, boom, right. boom, boom, boom. So give me the difference between a dude like him and a, and a dude like you for like the movies and, and, <laughs> and on stage. Like, well, I, it's like, I explained it earlier. Yeah. The, the thing with uh, information. Yeah. Right. He constantly is on. Doing skits. Skits. Right. He constantly making funny uh, situations on the phone. So that's entertainment. It's not like how we used to sit and watch a living color for an hour. Right. The kids ain't watching that now. Mm -hmm. the young guys are not watching that now. Yeah. If people want to see on their phone, ah, yeah. you know, you saw yeah, this? Yeah. And then you spread it around. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, even us older dudes, we doing it now. Right. But some guys mastered it. Mm -hmm. And when they mastered it, that's, you know, he's one that mastered it. Yeah. He did it early. He won He's one that listened. Because out of 20 guys that I had in the class, right. He stuck to it because I taught them that you need to make a presence on the internet, right. and any one of them will tell you. And so, the reason why I, 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 I asked you that question because, like you said to me, it's all about numbers, too. right? So, and you see Commodore on Instagram, right? His numbers is like whoo, crazy. But you see it on YouTube, they over here, yeah. Right. That's why I was like, I, I, yeah, you right. know, I'm thinking the YouTube will go the same way the Instagram, exactly. but if we post them on YouTube, the numbers ain't go like right. that on Instagram. He's more known on Instagram. So and that you, means Instagram more local, you say? Yeah, well, yeah. And you know what I'm YouTube is a bigger found, a foundation. Is. Right. And uh, people actually sit and watch YouTube like it's a TV show. TV yeah. show, exactly. So there's more content on there. And when you make it to a YouTube star, 
the money starts coming. Mm -hmm. It's a different whole bracket. Yeah. But Instagram, you might get a check or, you know, and I mean that blue check, but you're not really going <laughs> to. You're not making too he much money. Yeah. You ever thought about opening up a school? Well, yeah, I did. I have for, right. I did it at the go. Apollo. For, yeah, there you go. And, for um, comedians. Yeah. You know? And so with, with that being said, you know, I didn't charge anything, I, you know, but now I'm going the route of the internet because I got people from Kentucky, people, they, they know what my work is all about and mm -hmm. people want to be taught. They, even, they just want to be taught the fundamentals. Right. You got somebody who's rich and like, my son wants to be a comedian and, right. you know, could you teach him? So what I'm doing is I'm taking the next level and putting on a forum Hello? of the internet. Let me ask you a question. question. Mm -hmm. What's your take on a guy like Steve Harvey? Because Steve Harvey never been that funny to me, <laughs> right? He's to me, he's been an all right comedian, and he's been surrounded around guys like Bernie Mac and the dudes that such an entertainer that's way more funny than him. You understand what I'm saying? But he just blew far as like all these shows, Steve Harvey show and. And uh, you know we got the what's that uh, family feud and he's all over the place. I mean, hot stuff like that. Happens. You got any? any so with me saying that without incriminating myself, because yeah. <laughs> I feel because like, I had this debate with somebody the other day. I'm gonna tell you like this, yeah. and this is just my personal opinion. Yeah. So I'm gonna give it out there. Um, Steve, I used to do the crowd warming for Steve. Mm -hmm. And I looked up to Steve at one point. And I remember when Steve, I didn't know he had an issue with me, which, which it was never admitted that there was an issue. The problem came along when, um, you, if you remember the Apollo taping, Steve right. used to tape yeah. different shows, mm -hmm. so he would have to change their clothes. Right. I become a young, famous comedian. Y'all know how I dress. Mm -hmm. So people started making me clothes. Mm -hmm. So with my clothes being made, I remember one day, you know, I'm st still looking up to this brother. And he, they made me a, this one, Jodeci and all that was hot. So they made me a jumpsuit, a leather jumpsuit. Mm -hmm. So I came out with the leather jumpsuit. Crowd went crazy, you know, giving a shout out. But I'm only the crowd woman. I'm not even on TV. Right. And Steve, it was the last show, I'll never forget. Steve came out and was like, uh, the crowd went crazy. I mean, he had on some fly, you know, the gator, the regular Steve, it just was fly. Yeah. And I'm sitting there smiling, and just out of nowhere, I heard him say, yeah, this this, this what real men dress like, this, this ain't that leather bullshit. Uh, and it caught me off guard. <laughs> And you know, my, <laughs> I was like, whoa. Like, they ain't this, to go in on you, huh? So yeah, the yeah. second incident happened when I went, um, we were in Dallas. And I was, you know, I still hosted Apollo to this day. And we was doing a show. We was on tour, the Apollo tour. Mm -hmm. And they called Steve because his radio show was out there. Yeah. They wanted him to come in and host the small beginning segment of the show. And Steve was like, nah, I'm, I'm going to do the whole show. Mm -hmm. So when I came in there... It was like, he didn't know who I was. He tried to act like he didn't know who I was. So the producer was like, nah, this is Capone, and uh, such and such. First thing he said, oh yeah, you're the guy who used to change all the time at the Apollo. So I knew that bothered him. Yeah. So now, we hear the Apollo comes back on TV with Steve Harvey hosting it, and I'm the host of the Apollo. Every comedian got a call except me. Mm. Wow. To do a, do a part of the show. So my thing is, whether he's funny or not, uh, that, that pretend, and I always say it, to to be for the black people and, and look out for your homes. I never did nothing to him, but right. for some reason it's been told to me that he's trying to get me banned from a lot of shit. That's that hate uh, thing. With the, yeah, that's what we talked about. Yeah, but yeah. you know, we had a topic about that. Like, do you agree with someone blackballing someone? I don't like it. If you got the power, I'm not going to stop nobody. Like, unless they, it's, if it ain't personal, nobody, like, like we've said about, like, like 50 and Ja Rule, that's a real beef. Right. But, like, these regular stuff, like how they say, like, um, Monique got blackballed, different people get blackballed over a, a dislike. I don't, I don't like that type of stuff. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Well, um, let me ask you this. You've, you've heard of what Nipsey Hussle did, right? 
Yeah. You 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 were aware of that just not too long ago, right? So have you ever heard of Monique doing something like that? Ever. No. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So my point is, when things don't go right for you, why do you want to congregate us all now to hate on something that could be an entity for us? Oh, I see. You understand what I'm saying? You never, never did nothing for nobody right. from your whole career mm -hmm. that I know of. So if you never did nothing for, your, for anybody through your whole career, why is it that we need to step with you? Exactly. And this, this... I mean, you really, That's really right. That's right. you have to look at the demographics of the way things are. There's a lot of rappers that die. Yeah. But what makes this man stick out so much that they have in his funeral and the Nation of Islam, the Bloods yeah. and the Crips, come together? Yeah. It's what you do. Yeah. When you do things for the community and for the people, it don't have to be recognized. He didn't put up, I do this and I yeah, do that. He didn't, yeah. he didn't, you didn't even know it. Yeah. And his music, it wasn't popping like for us, yeah, it like it was in LA. Yeah. But you really found out about the true Samaritan that this person was yeah. afterwards. Now you got somebody who got, every time they got beef, we supposed to fall in because we black you. Yeah, you got offer yeah, 500,000 yeah. or 200,000. It don't matter what you got to offer. Take that. Yeah. Do what you got to do to show that you deserve more yeah. and then do something about it. Now yeah. we, we going to rally up. No, no, yeah, sir, yeah. not me. I'm not into that. And you're right about that because every time I turn on social media, television, whatever, Nipsey, he's still all over the place. Exactly. And, and he's he all over the place like he was a Biggie or Pac. Yeah. And he's been around that long. But he, his impact in a shorter time that he's been out there has been, he's been like, it's yes. been phenomenal, man. Exactly. I totally agree. Just because what he did. Like, he did. anytime you do it for people, and, and, and like your community. But you would have never known it if it wasn't for his death. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know he was doing all that. Yeah, that exactly. didn't even. I, I heard a couple exactly. songs and that was it for me. Right. Now I'm starting to hear all the, you know, all the, yeah. all the wonderful exactly. things starting to come up. And that's that's what I, I, I honestly I'm not even gonna lie. I said that's a prophet. Yeah. You got to look at what a prophet. Nobody nobody changes the world like that. Mm. And I don't want to speak on the death or nothing like that, but I know it's it's it, y'all will find out that it's bigger than what it is. Yeah. Anytime you get somebody who's a street dude to kill somebody. And you running, you ain't got nowhere to run, but you got a top paid lawyer taking your case. Yeah. Wake up. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> That's true. That's all I'm gonna say. Wake up. Yeah, I know, I know you got the, the Apollo. Yeah. Dude. So you know, I appreciate you coming on the show. We, no about to go to we the got Apollo. a few minutes. Oh you got a few minutes? Okay, yeah, okay. But okay. I want to ask you a question okay. anyway, so <laughs> Nah, because I know I don't want to expect this. No, I got you. Here. You've been on a lot of stages, man. What stage was the stage that you like, you know, that you loved the most? The Apollo has made me international. The Apollo has given me a voice beyond New York. Mm -hmm. I'm big in Japan because of the Apollo. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you've seen how they treat me in Japan, you would not believe it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm big in Africa because of the Apollo. Mm -hmm. So the Apollo is a great stage if it's utilized right. Right. And uh, I don't take nothing for granted. So I, I will honestly say to you, any stage that I've touched has been something special. To so me. what about the Deaf Comedy Jam? Deaf Comedy Jam gave me recognition mm -hmm. in the hood. Right. It gave me recognition in the hood and the one thing that I say that I got lazy back was once I hit Def Jam, I sat back mm -hmm. and just expected the work to boom. Mm -hmm. And it did, but it didn't hit me like it hit me on Shaq. When I did Shaq, Shaq tour mm -hmm. took me around the world and Shaq himself, he handpicked me. So that was something different. Like Kevin Hart, no, Kevin Hart was on that too. No, nah, he wasn't. No, nah, Kevin was already big. Um, well, but the the person I got to give the all most respect to is Damon Dash. Mm -hmm. Damon Dash had a vision. Even though I put Kevin Hart, he discovered us on my show at, at Caroline's. Damon had a vision, and unfortunately, as a man with a vision that's black and has kind of a big mouth. They don't like that. Right. But the man got a vision. I just wish that he would sit back a little bit 
and let his creative juices speak for him instead of him speaking so much because mm -hmm. he's a he's a fucking genius yeah i got nothing but love and respect yeah. for him and I, if if i ever made it to that place where i can just reach back if he was ever fucked up i would i would reach back reach back to him because that brother gave us all the yeah, opportunity when nobody else would yeah, yeah he did he's right about that yeah, the movies the movies was good man. yeah they the were movies was good they were but, they looked out for a lot of people, man, yeah. on the come up. But he's a boss. Right. And when you're a boss and you're loud, some bosses don't have to be loud. And I don't think he has to. He's so smart, his his work needs to speak for him. But when something ain't right, he just can't hold it back. He yeah. has to say something. Yeah, he just and that's what hurts him. Dang. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're right about that. That's my dude. So what's your um what's your advice you would give like an upcoming comedian? All up and coming comedians hit a stage, and when you grab a mic, make sure you got something to say. That's simple. A lot of comedians grab a mic and think it's all about cursing and the bitch and fucking. Nah, have something to say. Have a purpose. A lot of cats don't have a purpose. Jokes are not. They're not just to been to make you laugh. They make you. They meant to make you think. Comedy is valleys and peaks. Mm -hmm. And for me, I can make anybody laugh, but to grab your attention. Is what it's really all about. Who should take on Bill Cosby as a comedian? Man? I love him. I think he was a genius. Um, I say the same thing. Man. Yeah, I, you know. Man, man never curse. The man they have you in stitches. Sinbad is another genius. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we allow these powers of our people who are not our color. Mm -hmm. You know, when you when you turn your back on black people, black people are quick to turn your back on them. Right. So it's so sad to say it. When a person is successful, we take it as disrespect a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, that's wrong. You know, everybody has the opportunity. We all got the same 24 hours in a day. Just utilize it the right way. Exactly. Time is something that is so precious, and a lot of us don't take it seriously. We worry about the wrong thing. So what's your next move, man? What you got going on that we don't know about? <laughs> we, we didn't pull out yet. Well, I told you all about the Kings. Uh, we are... Uh, Got our Netflix special coming out, mm -hmm. which will take us to the next level. I produced a new movie. Uh, it's called Hearts Are Not Included, my own money. And, uh, I'm, you know, I'm just striving. Just, it's, it's not even about the money no more with me. It's all about staying uh, relevant for people to just remember what I got to say. Because... You know, I can, like I said, I can make anybody laugh, but if I can make you think, that's more more rewarding to me. Yeah, I agree. That <laughs> so, that's Let me, um, <laughs> so we do this like like a lot of entertainers that come in, like rappers, singers, and comedians. Can, okay. you, can you make us laugh right now? We got our, our whole team is here. You know, he had to come early because, you know, he had somewhere to go. So, you know, yeah, ladies came in. We're going to take follow. pictures with Capone and all that, you know. Thank but you. But <laughs> can you make us all laugh, man? Can you tell us something that, you know, going to make us follow. laugh a little bit? Man, give us something real quick. There's a little kid in here, and he waiting for me to curse. That's little Doc over there. He'd be, he'd be, yeah, all, right. He'd be all right. But you yeah. laugh just now. That's yeah. <laughs> So this is the whole team. I'm sorry I had to come yeah. early. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> we had to do this for it's a lot of y'all. I'm surprised y'all have guests. Y'all could guess each other. Yeah, man. We got, we got, you know, we got a nice team every week. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So what do y'all do this once a week? Yeah, yeah. every Wednesday. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, I'll, um, I'll, I'll plug y'all in with some of the guys if you want to interview them oh, as yeah, well. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, I definitely like to get them talent, man. Oh, yeah, I got you. Yeah, I definitely got to get talent. We supposed to got Rob too, remember? We had a yeah, yeah, we had Rob for a little second right now. He be moving around. Yeah, 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 yeah it's cool. Yeah. So you want to talk about him? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get that to is, bring up Dick Gregory. That said. is that is probably the most profound person in the world that was here between him and Red Fox. You know, they use comedy as a a way of reaching people, mm -hmm. but the wisdom and knowledge that them guys had. What about what's the name that was at Lennox Lounge? Paul Mooney. Paul Mooney. Oh yeah, Paul Mooney. Paul Mooney when he was like dirty. He he, he go to he go to hard. He hardcore. He go hard on yeah, white folks, hard. Though, man. Yo, I'm about to ask y'all, but why? <laughs> why would you say he's hard? 
No, no, no. I'm not gonna say he hard. I'm gonna take him. But he's not hard. He don't bite his tongue. Nah, he don't. That's he go goes to it. Yeah, when you say he's hard, that's the wrong way. No, no, the wrong way. He don't bite his tongue. Paul say they've been hard on us. Yeah. So yeah, to yeah. have somebody to speak for us, yes. in that sense, and try yeah, to make that, it that funny. Was Paul Mooney, man. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm mad they closed that Lennox Land. I used to go there just yeah. to see him, man. <laughs> and he was there every yeah. week too. That was Remember his that, thing. Right? Yes, that was his sir. spot. Yeah, man. All right. But tell everybody where, where they can find you at, man. Capone. Just hit me up on uh, on uh, Instagram, comedian Capone. Um, I don't. Facebook is full. I don't really look at that. Um, I'm everywhere though. I mean, I'm all over the world, all over the country. I just, I thank God that I'm still relevant to make people laugh, and uh, mm -hmm. that's that's something that I, I won't ever give up. Yeah, and tell everybody what podcast show you on right now, my brother. The who? What oh, podcast show I'm you on? on the right Beat now? 139. That's what it's called. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> my brother. Thank you. Great show, man. There you go. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right.